really nice terrestrial pattern I'm going to tie up today. This is the Henry's Fork Hopper. This pattern was created by Mike Lawson back in the 70s for fishing on the Henry's Fork River. Popularized back then, it's still a very, very popular pattern today. It's great for the smallmouth around in the Midwest here, as well as uh, trout um, out west, as well as trout streams around here. Like I said, we're in the midst of terrestrial season right now, so it's a great fly. It's a lot of fun to tie. There is a video out on YouTube where Mike Lawson is actually tying this fly. It looks to me as though it is dubbed from a VHS tape. On the computer, it doesn't look bad, but on the screen, it's very, very fuzzy. At the same time, there certainly is enough instruction on it for you to learn how to tie this fly. Pretty much, I've stuck to that video since it is Mike Lawson, and, uh, and he's the one who created it. But I try to explain it a little bit more. So anyway, that's the Henry's Four Copper. I'll go ahead and get started. Start the Henry's Fork Hopper, placing my hook in the vise. This is a Must Add 9672 in a size 8. I like a heavier wire hook for my terrestrial flies. A lot of people will tie them on a lighter wire hook. You could use like a Must Add 94831 or say a TMCO 5212 if you want. For thread, I'm using a UTC 140 denier in yellow. A lot of people for this particular fly will use like a, a yellow uh, monocord, which is a little paler yellow. It's not quite as pronounced. It's up to you. If you're going to do these in an olive scheme, use an olive thread. If you're going to do all black like a cricket or something, then just use black thread. I'm going to attach my thread behind the eye of the hook. I'm going to run my thread all the way down the hook shank and then back up to about halfway along the hook shank. This is just going to give me a base layer of thread for all of this hair. I don't want all of this hair that's on here to basically be rotating around or sliding around on the hook shank. I'll bring my thread back up to the halfway point on the hook shank, and then I'm going to tie in the body. For the body, Mike Lawson likes to use all elk hair on this fly, which is kind of nice. Um, you can get elk hair at different uh, lengths, different colors, things like this. I'm going to use elk hair and some deer hair on this, so I'll explain later. But I'm using for the body, this is an elk rump hair. This is a natural rump, which is just kind of a pale tan color. You can also use like a bleached rump if you want something brighter, or if you want, you know, an olive colored or brown colored, just go ahead and go with that. I'm going to take a clump about half a pencil in diameter off the hide here. I'm going to clean this with just a regular comb. Get all the short hairs out and all the under fur out. And then I'm going to go ahead and stack it. Now, the hair off my hide is pretty uneven on the tips, and that's why I'm going to stack it. I'm going to tie this in, and I'm actually going to tie this in by the tips with the bulk of the hair going along the, the towards the back of the fly. We're going to eventually fold it over to make the body. But because these are all so even, or uneven, I'm going to stack them, which will help maximize the hair and the materials for my body. I'm going to get just a little bit more hair. You want to make certain you get enough hair that it's going to go all around the hook shank and or all along the, the underbody and cover it up. You can always take a little bit more out just before you tie it in if you have too much. That's a good bit right there. It's like I said, about half a pencil in diameter. Put that down into my hair stacker and I'm going to stack that real quick. A 
One thing to keep in mind, the hair tips are all pointing downward here. When you're working with deer hair out of a hair stacker, think before you tie it in, think it for a second, the direction you want the tips to go. If they're gonna go out the back or if they're gonna be going towards the front. In this case, they're gonna be going towards the front. So looking at the hair stacker here, I'm gonna turn this counterclockwise so my tips are pointing towards the front. That way I can take these out, switch to my left hand. I have minimal transfer from one hand to another, i.e. less likely to screw it up, basically. I'm gonna trim just the very tips off right here, and then I can tie this in along the hook shank. I'm just putting some collecting wraps on this right at the moment. Hold on a second here. I just wanna collect that down. Now I'm gonna start cranking down on that a little bit. I wanna actually move that back down the hook shank a little, and I'll explain why in just a second. It has to do with the hair length. These hairs off of this rump are not that long. I mean, they're longer than say, you know, um, just a natural body hair or uh, what you would get for doing comparadons or something like that. But they're still, for this size eight hook, they're really not, they're barely long enough. So I'm going to start this halfway down the hook shank to help maximize the length of these hairs. I like to go ahead and really wrap that in kind of like foam. You just get some nice, nice collecting wraps on it and then go back and forth on it a little bit and, and crank down on it just to get that really secure to the hook shank. You don't want to tie these loose and have them start to rotate around on the hook shank while you're fishing them. Now there is an extended body on this and people do this in different ways, but if you watch the, the video that I mentioned that Mike Lawson did, you can discern that how he does it is he actually spiral wraps back down the hair about a quarter to about half a, uh, a shank length and then back up. And it just collects it and holds it so that when we push all of this forward and over itself to make the body, uh, it just it's, has more support to it. So the difficult part here is getting this around over the vise underneath the hair. What I found is if you just take your time with it, but make certain that you're when you're transferring from one hand to another, one of them is always controlling the hair. So in this case, I'm going to pinch the hair with my right hand. My left hand brings the thread up over the vise, but under the hair. I'm going to transfer this back to my left hand before I let go with my right hand. Uh, there, my thread got caught around the point there. Now I'm with my right hand to start that spiral backwards. My right hand is pinching the thread and the hair, controlling that thread to keep it from sliding, while my left hand grabs the thread, brings it over the vise and under the hair. Again, transferring that to my left hand, back to my right hand, and advancing that down I'll go about three wraps to the point where I have about a half a shank length long is gonna be my extended body. It may seem awkward to start out with, but just take your time with it. Just be deliberate. When you get back to that third wrap, I'll go ahead and put in three just collecting wraps. I'm not really tightening down on that thread at all. And then I'll work that thread back up, same spiral wraps. Like I said, it may feel awkward, but if you just take your time with it, going back from your right and left hand, it actually works out very well. Once I get back up to the hook shank, I bring it around at the end and my extended body has been created. Here, it's just a matter of Get your fingers in there, kind of move that hair around so it's even as you can, and just push it forward. I 
tend to always end up with a little bit down here at the bottom that didn't get pushed around. I'll kind of split that up on both sides of the body and push that forward just slowly get that hair around. If you have any that are real short here, you can just break them off. Just take your time with it. What I'm doing now is two things. I want to try and get the hair evenly around the hook shank and the body or the underbody. I don't want to pull on the hair and end up pulling that extended body in one direction or another. So keep that in mind. You're not pulling this forward. You're just kind of setting it and collecting it. Once I have that done and I don't have any stray hairs poking out in any weird directions, I'll take my thread and this is just three collecting wraps. And that is just to secure it so that I can now rotate it around and just double check. I don't want to have any spots where I don't have any hair around the hook shank and something that might look like this. So I want to make certain it's, it's covering all around the body here. Then I'll collect this with my right hand again. Now I'll put a little bit of pressure on the thread, not much, and I'll start moving forward in an open spiral. Again, Take your time with this. It may seem a little awkward holding this with your right and manipulating the, the bobbin with your left. But if you just take your time with it, you can get comfortable with doing this pretty quick. Now my wraps are a little too wide. I want to get about four wraps. The important thing here is the last wrap is going to end up being about a quarter of the way down the hook shank. So I'll put a few wraps just to hold those together and then move the hair out of the way and just make certain that, that the last wraps here are a good quarter of the way down the hook shank. I'm going to need this extra space here for tying in other materials. Now I'll go ahead and tighten that down. I don't want to tighten too much and cut through the hair, but I'll put in about 10 nice tight wraps to secure the end of that body. Then I can trim away the excess hair. As I said, it's very important that you leave this space about an eye length or so right behind the eye of the hook for tying in the head on this. So the body's nice and tight in there. I'm going to add just a drop of head cement to help secure that. And I'm going to tie in my wing. The wing on this, I'm using an L care. This is just a dyed yellow L care on this. You can do other types. Um, as I mentioned before, I, I've done some with dyed uh, deer hair. Uh, the tips are a little bit darker on it, but it's that's fine. I'm gonna get maybe about a quarter of a pencil, clean that, I'll stack this also. This time I want the tips pointing to the rear, so I'm gonna turn my hair stacker clockwise. Open that up. The tips are pointing towards the back. I'm going to collect these. I want these to be the length of the body. I'm going to secure those with my left hand. Pinch wrap to get that down. A couple of wraps. My left hand is holding that hair in place. I don't want it to rotate. I want it to be right up on top. Thing is, when you tighten down on that elk hair, it's going to flare it on both sides like it did here. The wings on grasshoppers tend to lay pretty flat along the back. So what we want to do is we want to collect that hair again so it's right up in the back. I'm going to take my thread back to that previous wrap on the body. 
and I'll put two wraps around just to collect that hair down along the back and that will lay it nice and flat. Then I can trim away the excess wing. A few wraps to secure those butt ends down. I still want to keep my thread right back here because I'm going to tie in an overwing, or I like to refer to it as a wing case. It is, it's kind of the hard wing, wing segments, I guess is what you would call them, that uh, when the grasshoppers are not flying, their wings are folded along their back and they have a hard case that folds down on top of them. I'm going to use a modeled hen hackle for the wing cover, uh, over wing as it's sometimes referred to. Uh, you could use, say, a uh, pheasant neck feather um, from either the hen or from a rooster if you want. Uh, I'm just going to use a model. If all you have is a grizzly, just go ahead with the, the grizzly. But we have to prep this first because if I were to just tie this in this way, one, it's going to be too wide, and all of these are basically going to fall apart as I'm, I'm fishing the fly pretty quickly. I mean, they may all start to fall apart anyway as you start catching fish. But So I'm going to peel away the fluff here, and I'm going to take some Dave's Flex Cement. You can use any type of flexible uh, head cement if you want. But it needs to be flexible, but it's got to be stiff enough to more or less kind of make this all into one solid sheet here. I'm going to take my bodkin, put just a little drop of this flex cement right along that feather and just spread that out a little bit. And then I'm going to take and run it through my fingers. And what that does is it just smears it on both sides. So now I have what will be my wing cover made out of this feather. I have to set this aside, excuse my reach, and let that dry. Now the difficult part is that when you set this down on the table to, to dry, it can easily flip over and glue itself to the table, to the dish, whatever. So in the process of doing these flies, I came up with this little jig. This is similar to some of the jigs that are out there for sale for prepping your materials ahead of time. So if you've got hackles or you've got deer hair or something for your uh, dozen flies that you're tying, you can prep them ahead of time, wedge them in this foam, and then it's all set ready. So when you're tying the fly and you get to that stage, you just reach over, grab what you need and tie it in. But I thought this is an interesting idea. This is just some couple pieces of plywood, half inch plywood and some four mil foam with some slits cut about every half inch. I might go a little wider if I redo this. But the nice thing is you can get all of these in here and then start putting your flex cement on here run your fingers down each one of them, and it actually, you use a little bit less um, head cement with it, but it's much easier than trying to hold it in your hand. Plus the fact that they're suspended and they don't get stuck in something else or pick up a hair off your table or something like this in them. And then they're all set, ready, dry. Uh, so when you get to this stage, you just grab one and tie it in. But for our purposes, the the feather that we just prepped is already dry. I'm going to go ahead and place this on top. I want the tips to be as long as the wing, and I want the rachis to go right down over the middle. I'm going to wrap that in with a couple of wraps, not real super tight. And then to keep this flat along the back, I'm going to bring my thread back to that previous wrap like I did over the wing. And I'm going to put two collecting wraps in there and then bring my thread forward again. I'll cut away the excess. A few wraps in there just to secure that. Now I'm going to bring my thread down behind the eye of the hook. Clean this area up for putting our head in. We're going to end up with a bullet shaped head right here. 
So this space will get filled up. A little bit more head cement. That will soak down in there and help secure that. Now I'm ready for the head of the fly. Now, as I said, Mike Lawson likes to do his with all elk hair. My natural elk hair isn't that long, so I'm going to actually use some deer hair. This is just natural deer hair. For this size hook, the, stuff, the elk hair that I have won't work for it. It just ends up being too short. I'm going to trim off about half a pencil length, maybe a little bit less. Clean that out, and I'm going to stack it. Again, if it's more than you need, you can always take some out. It's kind of a pain if it's not enough to add more to it. I'm going to turn my stacker counterclockwise because I want the tips pointing off the front. I'm going to measure these. This is a little bit more than I need. So I'm going to just take a little bit out. I'm going to measure these. I want these from the tips. I want them to be a shank length long. So that's where they're going to be folded back, right behind the eye of the hook, not where I'm tying it in. That's something to, to keep in mind. You're actually going to tie a little bit further back than that. Now, before I tie these in, though, I've gotten in the habit of trimming away all this excess. I don't need this. So I'm going to trim just a little bit past my tie-in spot. Sorry you couldn't see all of that because of my hand. But this can be make it kind of tricky. And if this is uncomfortable for you, then don't do it. Just go ahead and leave all that. But it can make it kind of tricky for tying this in because you really have just a little bit in your hand to tie in here. But I'll get a couple of pinch wraps on there three little wraps on there to hold that in place. Then if it flips down like it just did, that's fine because what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this all around the hook shank. Now, I don't have to have all these tips nice and even in, in regards to um, when I push this back. So if some of them get kind of off a little, that's fine. What's most important now is I have it even around the hook shank. I'm going to bring these hairs back forward. Holding the back end here, I'm now going to pull down on that thread and make certain I tie that in real well. I want to make certain I'm tying right up to behind the eye so I don't when I fold that back I don't have any thread wraps that are showing. Now I'm going to trim away the butt ends here. This is where trimming that off uh, ahead of time pays off because I don't have long butt ends that are mixing in with the tips that I want to keep. I can very easily push these tips out of the way and come in here and trim away those shorter butt ends and I don't end up trimming away a lot of the tips that I want to keep. You do want to try and trim away those butt ends as best you can because if they um, even if they are a little bit long you may think that they're they're not a problem but they can when you're creating the head on this they can poke through Don't know that the fish are really going to be that persnickety, but you know, we do tie these things for ourselves too. So just keep working around, getting all of those butt ends trimmed back. Once you have all of those trimmed back, we will tighten down the thread in, in and around the cut ends to secure it. Got just a few more in here.
one more right there. Let's see if I can see that one and get to it. Okay. So I'll go ahead and lash this down through those cut ends just to secure it. And now I'm going to move my thread back to where I tied in the wing and the overwing. Again, some head cement in here just to soak down in there. I'm going to use my fingers to push all those hairs back. This is going to give me just a kind of a pronounced bullet head on it. Then got one down there. Just take your time with it. Then I'm going to put in three wraps just to collect that down. I want to look this over again to make certain I don't have any gaps in that in the head there where you're seeing basically the hook shank or the under under portion in there. So it's nice and all around there. Then securing that collar, I'll put in two or three wraps nice and tight and go ahead and put in a whip finish. It is very important that you have that head tied in underneath, inside there, really secured down, as well as right here, it's nice and secured. Otherwise, when you're fishing this, it will tend to turn on you and possibly even those thread wraps come forward and fall apart. Okay. Now the collar's kind of flared a little bit. You can work this, pinching that, pushing that back down a little bit if you want. I'm going to put some head cement on this all around those thread wraps and even around the head a little bit. Just going to help seal that up, protect it a little bit. You can then grab the hair and hold the hair down a little bit get some of that head cement down at the base and that will also help to keep that hair from fly, flaring outward and you end up with a nice collar. Collar is going to represent your legs so if you want you can tie in some rubber legs a lot of people do or even some um, pheasant tail fibers uh, legs made out of pheasant tail fibers that's up to you but I think this fish is just well the way it is. So that's the Henry's Fork Hopper. A lot of fun to tie. Uh, it's, it was very popular, uh, it still is very, very popular in Western rivers, especially during August, late July, August, September for terrestrial season. But this is a very, very effective fly in warm water circles where I'm from for smallmouth and even large panfish. So if you're into the terrestrials this time of year, this is a great fly to add to your box. This is a size eight. You can do even a size six. It all depends on how long the hair is that you have, or you can go down to say a size 10 or 12 if you want. Uh, great panfish fly. So that's the Henry's Fork Hopper. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, Remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.